Narcissists are notorious blame shifters. When something goes awry, they are quick to blame others. It is never their fault, but always the fault of someone or something outside of themselves. And when you have a narcissist who professes to be a devout Christian, but is actually a wolf in sheep's clothing, it is even worse because their narcissism is cloaked and camouflaged under all the spiritual language and outward forms of piety. It can be very confusing. In this video, I'm going to hack into the spiritualization of blame shifting that the religious narcissists do to manipulate you so that you can recognize blame shifting plainly for what it is and not be duped by the narcissist show of fake godliness. Now first, before we get into it, for those of you who are new to my channel, welcome. I'm Shanine Megji. I'm a transition coach. Welcome to my channel called Toxicity is Not Your Destiny. My mission is to help people navigate toxic relationships in their lives from a biblical, practical, and spiritual perspective. So if you'd like to receive regular content from me on the subject, take a moment and click the subscribe button and click the bell because every week I'm going to be bringing you a new video to empower you in navigating toxic relationships in your life. So without further ado, let's dive into the subject. It's a sobering reality to see that many narcissists, particularly male ones, gravitate towards Christianity, not because they are interested in following Jesus Christ and being conformed to his image, but because Christianity is an easy playground for them to continue their narcissism and twist and weaponize the scriptures to turn their narcissism into a virtue, which is the most diabolical warfare there is. Many narcissists also gravitate towards ministry and helping professions because of the lure of honor that is connected with the role, the praise, the recognition and adulation that they receive from the people around them is a drug that regulates their emotions and helps them to feel like the grandiose special person that they believe themselves to be. I'm not saying that all people in ministry and helping professions are narcissists. However, there are many that are. So here's one thing to keep in mind as I get into this video. All narcissists are blame shifters, but not all blame shifters are narcissists. A blame shifter is someone who refuses to look within for the cause of a problem. They have an external locus of control, meaning that when something goes wrong, it is some force, some person, some event out there that is the cause of it, no matter how ridiculous, how foolish, how nonsensical their arguments are. It's really their defense me mechanism to avoid taking responsibility, which is ultimately their defense mechanism against shame. All blame shifters run from their shame by blaming all things on everything and anyone except themselves. And this issue is a massive mental stronghold that such people need to get free from. When it comes to a religious blame shifter, someone who professes faith in God, it really takes discernment to pick up that they are operating out of a mental stronghold of blame shifting because the things that they blame as the cause of their negative outcomes can sound like very real and plausible things that could be happening in any spiritual person's life. For example, a spiritual blame shifter might express the following things. I'm going through spiritual warfare right now. The enemy is attacking me because I'm a threat to the enemy's camp. I'm being persecuted for the work I'm doing for God. People are jealous of me. People are plotting my demise. And the truth is there is an enemy. There is warfare. There is a battle in the spirit. It's very true that when you are doing a work for Jesus Christ and seeking to advance his kingdom, the enemy can use people around us to sabotage and undermine the works we are doing for God. And many heroes of the faith lamented and cried out to God because of those very issues that happened to them. So how do you know if someone is legitimately suffering from these things versus using spiritual language to cover up their narcissism, to blame shift and avoid taking responsibility? You'll know it by what they consistently and constantly fail to express as a possibility for their negative outcomes, which is them. If you sense that they are a serial blame shifter, you may want to say to them, maybe at your own risk, it seems you've had a series of negative outcomes. What is the common denominator for all of those negative outcomes? 
A question like that could get them to become more self-aware if they're not narcissistic, but it could trigger a narcissistic rage if they are. If you have somebody that is always blaming warfare, always blaming the enemy, always blaming other people who are out there to get them, and never once do they mention anything about them that is influencing the outcomes in their life, and that is a regular pattern of their line of thinking and believing, you may be dealing with a chronic blame shifter. And they're no different from regular blame shifters. They're just using this fancy biblical language to make themselves look pious. Let's take a look at the story of David in the Old Testament. David is an example of someone who was truly persecuted. King Saul was jealous of him because David was a more popular warrior than he was, and the people were giving David more accolades than Saul, even though Saul was the king. So because Saul was consumed with jealousy, he sought to kill David. He chased him in the desert and the caves for years. I mean, Saul was relentlessly pursuing him. And as a result, there were several people that turned on David. So when David was lamenting in the book, in the Psalms about being attacked and persecuted and feeling betrayed, and people being jealous and envious of him, he was rightfully expressing what was true. He was identifying the correct source of his blame. The enemy was working through people to hound him and destroy him. He was a victim. He was being persecuted. There were a lot of outside forces coming against him to take him out. But how do we know that King David was not a blame shifter when he was saying all these things? We know that King David was not a blame shifter because of how he dealt with confrontation. Later on in David's life, after he became king, he lusted after a beautiful woman named Bathsheba. And you can read the story in 1 Samuel 11, but I will just paraphrase it here. Instead of King David resisting his lustful thoughts, he pursued Bathsheba and went after her and slept with her. And to make matters worse, he arranged for Bathsheba's husband to be killed in a battle so he could take her to be his wife. It was pretty awful, and this upset God greatly. God sent prophet Nathan to confront David for committing adultery with Bathsheba and murdering her husband. When Nathan confronted King David, he didn't start defending himself or justifying his actions. King David owned up to what he did, and he said, I have sinned against the Lord. This is a powerful statement because in the Garden of Eden, when God confronted Adam and Eve, they didn't own up to their sin, but they blame shifted. It was very instinctive. Adam said, it's the fault of this woman you gave me. And Eve said, it's the fault of the snake here. And King David could have been tempted to have an instinctive response like that because he never saw the confrontation from Nathan coming. Nathan's confrontation really came out of left field for King David simply because of the way Nathan started off with this parable to draw in King David's sense of justice, which ignited King David's fury. And that's when Nathan came in with this sledgehammer to say, you are the, you are the one at fault. So King David, if he was a narcissist, could have turned beet red and gotten furious with Nathan and stuck him in some prison cell and said, how dare you accuse the king? Who do you think you are? But he didn't. He was like, I have sinned. He wholeheartedly received what Nathan had to say. He got on his face, he prayed, he fasted before God. And here's the Psalm that David wrote as a result of Nathan's confrontation to him. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions, wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you are right in your verdict and justified when you judge. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Yet you desired faithfulness even in the womb. You taught me wisdom in that secret place. Cleanse me with hyssop and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all of my iniquity. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. So in this psalm, we see that David acknowledged and owned up to his sinfulness. 
He asked God to cleanse him from it, to blot out his transgression, to wash away his iniquity. He acknowledged that he sinned before God. And by asking God to create in him a pure heart, he was also acknowledging that his heart was not pure. These authentic words of repentance uttered from David's lips and then his actions to back up his words are a clear telling sign that David was not a blame shifter. He was able to rightfully assign blame where it belonged, but he himself was not a blame shifter. Another example is Moses. Moses was also a leader and he was also falsely accused by a rebellious lot of people, Korah and his men. These people had a wrong, arrogant attitude. They were critical. They wanted to take Moses out. The scripture says about Moses' response, so when Moses heard it, he fell on his face. Now, many leaders would preach about the rebellion of Korah, and they may say things like, don't touch God's anointed, lest you suffer the same fate as Korah and his men, because God doesn't take lightly to these things. But a spiritual blame shifter will ignore Moses' humble attitude that he got on his face before God when he was being challenged or criticized by other people. Moses never took himself too seriously. So any person that tells you not to touch God's anointed, but does not practice the humility and self-examination of Moses in their own hearts is probably a narcissist. The truth is that Christianity is not a religion that people can hide behind, even though they may try. It is a religion that requires every person to search out their hearts, to test themselves, to see if they are still in the faith. King David prayed, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties and see if there is any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. A spiritual blame shifter would never have such a prayer on their hearts, but that is the attitude of a true follower of Jesus Christ. This is how you can tell the difference between a spiritual blame shifter and someone who is authentically seeking to follow Jesus. Both a blame shifter and an authentic follower of Jesus could still be victims of demonic warfare, of persecution, of accusations, of all kinds of things, because that is the nature of following Jesus Christ. Jesus did say that persecution and troubles will come, but the difference between a spiritual blame shifter and a true follower of Jesus Christ is that the follower factors in self-reflection, going inward, seeking to understand what motivates them to do the things they do, and here's the big thing. When they run into conflicts and confrontations with others, their instinct is to ask God to search their hearts rather than automatically assume that the fault lies with something or someone outside of them. So what can you do if you find yourself around a serial spiritual blame shifter? You are with someone who thinks they are fine and everyone else around them is the problem. So realize that this person is deluded, at best deceived, as long as they are not taking ownership of their part in co-creating their negative outcomes, they are never going to change. Realize that this person has a blind spot. Change requires self-awareness and taking responsibility. If a person is always blame shifting, then they lack self-awareness and they are refusing to take responsibility. So all you can do is change yourself and how you respond to them. So that means stop believing their lies, you are not to blame for any of the narcissist problems if you are dealing with a narcissist. They need to own up and face themselves. You are simply a convenient escape for them to not have to face themselves. Their blame shifting is actually symptomatic of a deeper issue within them that they are running away from, which is their shame. So ask God for laser sharp discernment so you can continue to separate what is true from all the lies. Ask God for the discernment to see behind all of the spiritual fluff. And search out the scriptures like the Bereans did so that you can be grounded in God's truth and immune to false teachings and doctrines that are becoming rampant in these times. So I hope this video was helpful in giving you some insight on how to discern a spiritual blame shifter. On another note, if you are thinking of leaving or have left a toxic environment and you are in a season of transition, check out a free training I have put together. It is all about three key ways to navigate a transition. These are things that brought a massive breakthrough in my life when I was going through a difficult transition. I have included the link in the description box below. And if you have not subscribed yet and would like to receive regular content from me, click the subscribe button. And if you like the video, please give it a like. 
This helps me to know what kind of content to produce. If you have suggestions of topics you would like me to cover, please feel free to drop your ideas in the comments section. Thank you so much. This brings me to the end of my video. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.